Well, hey, you guys. So do you ever feel like you're constantly just hearing what you should and shouldn't do with your money? Well, trust me, there is a lot of noises out there, a lot of messages. So that's why today I'm gonna be debunking some money myths and just some straight up lies that our culture tells us when it comes to money. So I have six lies that that I'm gonna tell you about. I'm gonna tell you the truth and also give you practical tips so that you can have control when it comes to your money. All right, here we go. Lie number one, budgeting means that you can't have any fun. Y'all, I hear this all the time. People are like, oh, I don't wanna budget. It feels like it's, you know, gonna limit what I do with my money. It feels like you can't have any fun. You have to be cheap. But can I just tell you, a budget does not limit your freedom. A budget gives you freedom. It gives you the permission to spend money, okay? So listen, you go out to dinner and you're like, yeah, we're having a great, you know, date night. This is so fun. And knowing how much you're gonna spend on out to eat money that month, you're able to be like, okay, how much do you wanna spend tonight on this dinner? And then that kind of just helps guide you on how the night's gonna be. And again, some people are like, oh my God, that's so boring. Like just YOLO, go have fun. But what it really does is it takes away second guessing. It takes away guilt spending because you have been intentional and you have a plan. So there's no more shame of like this uncertainty of you know waking up the next day and being like, oh man, was that too much? I don't know, I don't know. If it's in the line of the budget, then you can spend it. It's a really beautiful thing, okay? So budgeting is one of the things that Again, for everybody, I want you to do. And if you don't have every dollar, the budgeting app, make sure to do it because this is an incredible tool to help you not only create your budget, but stick to your budget. So go to everydollar.com slash Rachel, create your first budget and continue to do this. And again, a budget is your income for the month minus all of your expenses, including giving and saving should equal zero. So every dollar just has a name. It's just a plan for your money. And the other thing is you guys, your budget can change throughout the month. You can be like, oh, well, we're not doing this much in this category. We're gonna lower here and up here. Like you get to decide. And that's the beautiful thing is you have control over your money. All right, lie number two is that you have to have debt to survive. Okay, listen, debt is everywhere. It is normal. This is what everyone does. And the other thing is, is that everyone, according to statistics for the most part, is struggling financially. Like there is this correlation when you have debt, you have car payments and student loans and you're chasing these credit card points and paying off the bill or not every month. And it's all these payments going out. That is your hard income and your work, what you make from working is going out to support all these other entities in life and not your own, okay? so. There is a freedom when it comes to getting paid and that money just staying in your account. And then you get to decide where that money goes. And usually, if you're wise, you're like, okay, we're gonna spend some of that, we're gonna give some of that, and we're gonna save and invest. And then when you get to that point of investing, then your money starts making money on its own, which is a beautiful thing. And you're doing that for yourself and your family, not for banks and not for you know Toyota Motor Company over there. So it is an amazing place to be when you are debt-free, not only mathematically speaking, but also from the emotional side. When you don't owe anyone anything, it gives you more options. It's a really beautiful thing. Now, tactically, if you are in debt, you wanna start paying it off. You wanna get a $1,000 emergency fund first and then start paying your smallest debt off first. Pay minimum payments on everything, don't get behind but start attacking that smallest debt, which means you may be taking that budget that we talked about in lie one, cutting some things out. It may mean taking on an extra side hustle for just a period of time, just to get some extra cash flow in to get it paid off as quickly as possible. All right, lie number three, I'll finally be happy when I can buy blank. And if you have said that, I have said that, (laughs) yes. It is a human cycle that we just like subconsciously believe where you're like, oh my gosh, I need, you know, those new jeans from Abercrombie this season. Those are so cute. Like that will complete my life, you know, or oh my gosh, if I could just have this thing over here, oh, that would make me feel better. And that's just, I, I want that. Like these like subconscious thoughts that we have when it comes to stuff is unbelievable. And then the problem is, is when we believe that that stuff is somehow going to complete us, that somehow we are not full and whole. And if I have this thing or wear that thing, live here, vacation there, suddenly I'm gonna change. And that's just not the truth. You are who you are until you decide to change. And that's self-work and that is doing stuff on the side has nothing to do with what you buy. And so there's a level of contentment that is so powerful. In fact, I think contentment is one of the most powerful 
principles out there. Godliness with contentment is great gain, is what scripture says. And that is true. You have such gain in life when you are content. There is so much more joy in life when you are content and you're not just in this rat race chasing, chasing, chasing the next thing. So it's a beautiful thing to master. It's more of a heart issue there when it comes to contentment. But I think gratitude, humility, like different things really breed this level of contentment that helps you live your life in a more peaceful way. All right, lie number four, you don't need anyone in your money business. Man, we are so American sometimes in our independence of like, I'm doing this on my own. I'm pulling myself up by my bootstraps. Look what I did. I'm doing this. Like there's a beauty in independence for sure, right? Like I'm not discounting that. But I think we're also made and created to live life with other people. So when it comes to your money specifically, like have people in your life that you talk about the subject with. Like it's a beautiful thing to have people that will celebrate with you, that will sit in the struggle when it's really hard and you're in a hard season. But having people in your life and not being isolated, I'm telling you is a better way to live. Now, if you're married on a tactical sense, that person is your partner, right? There is a level of working together that is very in tune, very together when it comes to finances. But if you're single, have someone in your life that knows everything. Honestly, having somebody that you can say, hey, I wanna make this big purchase. You know my numbers. Is that smart? Is that wise? And they may be like, you are second guessing yourself. Yes, go and get it. You can afford it. Or they could be like, mm, I don't know. This and this kind of make me a little nervous. What do you think about that? Like just having somebody to talk through things with. And I've even read in a recent book that a couple had like three other couples where they shared everything with these other couples too. So I'm like, you know, it can go as wide as you want on the vulnerability side of money and sharing it with people. But I just wanna encourage you to have people in your life that you can talk to when it comes to money because we are not meant to do life alone. And part of not doing your money life alone is having an expert in your corner. Having somebody that does this stuff day in and day out is so crucial. And when it comes to investing specifically, having a financial expert is really key. So if you're looking for a financial expert to help guide your financial journey, I really recommend connecting with a Ramsey Trusted Pro. I've added a link in the description so you can check that out and find one, interview a couple of them and just see, hey, who do you click with? But having a pro in your corner is really, really key. Lie number five is I'll start saving after I blank. I'll start saving after this vacation. I'll start saving after Christmas. I'll start saving after the kids get back to school. Like whatever it is, it's always this, I'm gonna push it off later. Or maybe it's just this YOLO mentality completely where you're like, oh, I'm good. I'm just gonna live life. I'll just worry about that later down the road. Can I just tell you like life goes fast, okay? And later down the road, in your late 30s, early 40s, late 40s, early 50s, like all of those, that time, it comes a lot faster than you expect, okay? So I want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy life. But I also want you to be wise and be thinking about the future. I promise you, the future you will always be like, dang it, I wish I started earlier. We hear that all the time. And I don't want that regret to follow you, but I do want you to be wise when it comes to saving. So when it comes to saving, the $1,000 emergency fund is baby step one. And the baby steps, this is a guide to help you when it comes to your money and a step-by-step -step plan. So again, that first thing is the emergency fund. Get that $1,000 emergency fund, then pay off debt, like we talked about earlier, and then save up a three to six month emergency fund. That is like your savings, okay? You can have that in a high yield savings account, a money market account, put that away. And then be saving really for your future when it comes to investing and invest 15% of your income into retirement after those first three steps are done. And that will get you on a path. But you wanna make this a rhythm. When it comes to money, you always wanna be giving, you always wanna be saving, and you always wanna be spending and enjoying. And those will look different, different percentages maybe throughout your life or throughout the season that you're in. But overall, saving needs to be part of your life. All right, and lie number six is I don't have any money left to give. I hear this a lot. So as we just talked about three things to do with money, give is one of those things. And when I talk to people, again, they go down the budget and they're like, I have no more money left to give. I don't know. And I'm like, oh, that's because you have your budget upside down. <laughs> Turn around. Okay, and this feels so counterintuitive to people when I encourage people to give. But if you are on a financial journey that you create the habits, you create the mindset that it's just all about you, or I would even go and say all about just your family, like when it's just so 
uh, tunnel visions, right? There is something that you're missing in life because when that's your habit for a long time, and then maybe you start doing well with money, you start making more money, you start making more on investments or like whatever it is, and you start actually building wealth, that tunnel vision continues to stay there. It really does. And I think the further along you get, the harder it is to break that. And what you miss out on when you're not giving is you miss out incorporating other people, other areas of life into your life. And when you live with an open hand, there is a joy that comes beyond you, beyond even your immediate family. There is something there. When you have the perspective that money is there to be a tool to create a life that you love, part of that life that you love is giving because of the joy that comes with helping people. And it's not this like clogged up thing where it's so tunnel vision. I think there's a level of that when you are so focused on you for so long, there is a selfishness that occurs. It really does. And I think you can give in so many different ways, not just money, but I think money is one of the hardest. I really do. So time and money, those are hard, hard things to give away. But I would encourage you to do it because I think it just enhances your life overall. So tactically, what I say about this is to give a little until you can give a lot. And 10% is always a great baseline to start with that may feel like too much for you starting out, and that's fine. It may feel like too little, I don't know. But have somewhere that you start. I challenge you to do that. Start next month with your budget and say, for the first time, we're gonna give something away and see what it does. So you guys, there it is. We have uncovered some truth behind some big lies that we may hear every day again, outwardly, or maybe we feel it internally. But getting to this point where money is a tool to create a life you love is what I want for you. And I think you have the ability to make wise choices, not just following the crowd, but I want you to have peace and freedom when it comes to your money. And if you wanna learn more about what might be standing in the way of your financial freedom, check out my video to learn why some people earn high salaries and are still broke. And it's more common than you think. So I hope this video again gives you a fresh perspective when it comes to money management and to remember to take control of your money and create a life you love.